And so here we say, now, the cares of the world. So you're sitting at home, those of you that don't take any notes, and you go home, and nobody's trying to get you to take notes, understand, because we can get the CD and take the notes later. So when you get home, here's what happened. You're thinking about this word, but he says, the cares of the world. The deceitfulness of wealth, that is, trying to get money and trying to get things, and the desires for other things come in, and they choke the word out. So that's 75% of my congregation is not getting where I want them to be. That's what... That's what I'm supposed to recognize, but I don't accept that. There's another 25%. Now watch this next 25%. Others, verse 20, others like seed sown on the good soil hear the word and they accept it. And they produce a crop. 25% are going to be successful at receiving the word and experiencing the life that God wants you to have. But notice of that 25%, some of them are only going to produce 30%. Some 60 and some 100, meaning that out of the 25%, less than 8% are going to fulfill or do all that God would have them do. Or not, uh, uh, less than, that's about 30% of them are going to accomplish all God would want them to do out of that 25%. But out of that 25%, that's less than 8% of all the folk in this room. Less than 8% are going to fully see what God is going to do but not in this church, because I'm fixing to give you the key. Say key. key. I'm fixing to give you the key so that you can have the abundance of all God wants you to have, that you can have an abundance of possessions. I'm going to give you the key. And it starts off with them little foxes. It starts off with them little things you got to see. Notice something here, that in this, of those that are successful at receiving God's word, he said they accept it. They receive it, they take it in, and then they do something different other than just hear it and receive it. They do something with it, they act on it. And that's the title, the first title of this message called Act. That's the title of the message, Act. They produce a crop. After hearing the word, you have got to do something. It's not enough to come in here. Remember, of the 25% that's going to make it, that are doing something, some will do 30, some will do 60, some will do 100. The problem with the rest of you is that you don't ever act on the word you have heard. There's a group that hears it, the devil steals it. There's a group that hears it, and they're on the path. You have no root to do anything about it. So you don't do nothing. You just sit in here, and you listen to everybody else. And that's, the, that's on the, the, the ones the devil have taken them, and then there's the one that's on the, on the rocks, and then there are those that do hear it, but you don't ever do anything because when you get ready to do it, you start thinking about something else you need to start doing. Those are the ones among the thorns. But there are those that are of that 25% that's going to be successful, that's going to experience the life that God wants you to experience. You're going to experience it because you are going to hear it, accept it, and do something about it. Now watch. This is what we learn from Luke, the fifth chapter. Doing something about what you hear. So in Luke, the fifth chapter, I know I've got guests in the audience today, so I probably need to read those few verses in Luke so that they will know it, and I'll go over it. I know Guiding Light can probably quote this thing verbatimly now. And we're going to go over it. One day as Jesus was standing by the Lake of Gennesaret, for all of the, the, the visitors that we have, thank you for coming today. We have special guests that are with us today, and we're going to have something special for them, too. Oh, it says, one day, when Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, Galilee, with the people crowding around. Please note that people gathered around, a whole bunch of folks. Notice, crowding around, crowding. There's a group of people, and what are they doing? They're listening to the word of God. So a bunch of folk listening, just to be careful how you hear, he says, because understand this. Only 25% are going to get it anyway. 75% are going to flake off and fall off. What makes them fall off? I'm going to tell you in a minute. Watch this. Verse 2, he says, he saw at the water's edge two boats 
He says, left there by fishermen who were washing their nets. You know why were they washing their nets? You know the story. God in light already knows the story. Let me tell everybody else that doesn't know the story. They're washing their nets because they've been out working all night last night. They didn't catch nothing. And so, but they put them nets out there in the sea and they got salt water and all the stuff on it. And, you know, they're dirty. And so they need to clean their nets and clean them. They're not as messed up as they could be if they caught a lot of fish, but they need to clean them anyway because they want to keep the nets, which tells you about something. If you want to keep what you got, you need to clean it up. You need to take care of it. You just don't drive that car with no oil in it too long because you tell you what, you're going to tear it up. You need to clean up some of the stuff you got. Oh, but that's not what we're going to talk about. We're going to keep on going. So they were washing it. And then he got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon. He asked him to put out a little from shore. See the word little? Circle little. What I say? Little foxes. Little, little foxes. Little, little from shore. Little, little. See, little, little, little things. Little things. But little, little. See, little circle, little. Because little means something. A whole bunch of little things. Little thing. God tell you a little thing. He'll tell you a little thing. Sound like it's little, but it ain't little. He said, do not... Do not despise little beginnings, small beginnings. Okay, but let me keep going. He says, so he asked him to put out a little from shore. Then he sat down and talked to people from the boat. So I'm telling the story. We're going, he asked him to, guiding light knows the story. Verse 4, he said, when he finished speaking, he said to Simon, he said, put out in the deep water and let down the nets for a catch. And here's what Peter said. He said, hey, wait a minute. We worked hard all night, haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I'll let down the nets. And here it is, he's saying, we ain't called none. We didn't work hard. But just know the story. I'm just going over the story. And then when he had done so, when they had done so, when they had done so, when they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that the nets began to break. That's the story. This is the story. The nets begin to break. And then you need to understand. Well, I got one more thing. I think go one more verse on it. Go with it. Let's see that one more verse. So they signaled to the partners on the shore to come and bring the other boat to come in and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. So here's an abundance that Jesus has told them that they could have and they got it. That's what we're going for. We are going to get this abundance so that we have an overflow. But now I'm going to go back and show you how it happens. Now everybody's got the story. Go back to verse 3. He got in one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from the shore. That word little gives you a key to how he is about to be blessed. I said I'm going to give you the key. The key is in the word little. He asked Peter to put out, he got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon Peter, and he asked him to put out a little. Now let me ask you a question. If he had gotten in that boat and Peter said, what you want? And he said, put out a little from the shore. Why? Why should I put out? I got other stuff to do. I, can't you see I was cleaning my net? I ain't got time to let you preach some more. Can't you be satisfied with preaching over there on the shore? Why you, got, why you pick my boat? He didn't go through all that stuff. The key to his success was him doing the very first thing Jesus told him to do which was to put out a little. Notice, Peter had to put out a little. Sure, put out a little. A little from shore. If Peter had not done that, he wouldn't have gotten what happened in the next verse. Notice in the next verse, Jesus says, put out into deep. Predicated upon the deep coming had to first be the little. He had to first of all do the little thing before he could get to the deep thing. If he had not done the little thing, if the devil could have stopped him with the little thing, it would have been the little thing that destroyed the opportunity for him to have the abundant blessing. Do you hear that? It all was based upon doing a little thing. And notice this too. What does Jesus say to Peter? This he showed me this morning when I was ministering. Verse 3, the first thing he says to Peter 
Even though I say, may I use your boat? May I use your boat is an understood thing. He just steps in that boat. First word is key. Put out a little from the shore. That's all he said. And if Peter had not done that, he never would have been able to say to him, launch out into the deep. Two things Jesus said to Peter. The first was put out a little. There never would have been another word if Peter had not done the little. Then he sat down and he taught the people. But then after he teaches the people, he turns around and says, now you launch out into the deep. How many of you have missed your ability to launch into the deep because you ain't done the little thing first? Notice that God speaks here now one way and then another. So he says it in Job. Here he speaks. He's always speaking, though a man may not perceive it. But you want to know if you're going to hear anything else from God? It's not based upon your listening. It's based upon your doing. It's based upon your acting. You've got to act on what you already heard before you're going to get any more. If you're not faithful in the little things, how are you going to get great things? Look at what we have here. When he had finished speaking, take this to King James and show this now. That means right now, this moment. When he had finished, Peter did not do like the 25% that uh, the devil snatches, sits up there and keep cleaning his net. He didn't sit up there when Jesus was preaching. He was listening. He was listening. Can you say, he was listening? <laughs> he wasn't like some of us in the church. Where you gonna be tonight? Can I see you this evening? Hey, boo. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Why the word going for? Okay, I'll meet you. I'll meet you at the Golden Corral. Yeah, then we go. We're going to go to your place, my place. Well, when in my day, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to complain about the kids texting because in my day, it used to be little pieces of paper. Just pass this down. <laughs> Y'all remember that? Had that little folded sheet of paper. No, it ain't for you, it ain't for you. It's for her. <laughs> but Peter was paying attention. That's why Jesus said, be careful how you hear. That's why I started off this morning and said, you need to be able to see what I'm saying. Because I ain't playing. When I walk in my anointing and what I'm called to do, I know what I'm giving to you. And I know some powerful stuff. Ain't costing me. Because I've been practicing for 30 years saying, Lord, take control. I think he's pretty doing a good job right now. Really, now, I need to be careful about that, but I, 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 I'm loving it. You know why I love it? Because I'm getting something out of it while I'm doing it. Why do I go on so long? Because I get something out of it. Ooh, glory to God. And just like I learned this morning, what he said to Peter, he said one thing to him, never would have said the next thing had not Peter done the first thing. And that's a lesson for all of us also to learn. And notice that when he finished speaking, so it, Peter had to wait until the benediction. Wasn't none of this, uh, and, and check this out. Where were they? They were a little bit out from the shore. The porta potty was on the beach. <laughs> Peter had no time to get up. He waited until Jesus finished speaking. I'm trying to get some message across to some folk in here. Up in him. Because, see, y'all, my folk, y'all need to know because y'all going to win. You all are like the land of Goshen. I told you, you're protected. For all these brothers over here, I see these brothers, this is the right kind of place. You want some protection. I'm going to tell you how you're going to get some victory. You just listen to me because I'm going to talk to you straight. I don't play no game. I ain't got, a ho I ain't got no hoop, so if you're expecting a hoop, y'all going to be disappointed today. Amen. 